Hello. So I'm blocking out the temple here in Unity in the scene. Uh, this is a ruined temple that we will be having an adventure in. And I'm just using these square blocks to block it out. Uh, this is just blocked out. It's not like uh, finished in any way, shape, or form. And then I can walk through it using right mouse button and WSAD and see what my player might be seeing. So here you can notice that as we are exiting this hallway, we aren't able to see the ground floor of that uh, um, altar up there. We can only see it when we're here, so if the player is thinking about it, he's going to be straining for a view of that altar until the last possible second, uh, because when he's down here, he also can't see the, the floor precisely. He'll be looking at it from this angle, so it'll always be a little bit of a mystery, and we can play that up if we would like to, and I think that's a good idea. Um, I think it's a good enough idea that I will go ahead and raise the altar up a little bit more. But because these are just being blocked out, I can't really adventure with my character through them yet because I don't have a uh, uh, a jumping character yet. So it's a little bit difficult for me to work with this. Now you might be asking, why don't you block this out in um, you know on paper or sketch it up or something? And that's definitely a perfectly good way to do things. Uh, and I really recommend that you don't just randomly block things up. Uh, when I'm randomly blocking things up like this, what I'm doing is I have a specific layout in mind, and I'm just putting it together based on uh, based on the blocking here and here in Unity. When I am putting things together. Uh, here in Unity, it's good because I can follow some rules that are difficult to follow on paper. Because I follow a very specific set of rules when I'm building in 3D worlds like this. My rules are that nothing should be both straight and flat. If something is flat, it should not be straight. And if something is straight, it should not be flat. Um, it's not an either or thing. You can be both curved and raised, but you can't be neither. Uh, and the reason for that is because the subtle variations in heading and in height matter a lot when you're in the world. They are the biggest advantage that 3D art has over uh, 2D art, over, over grid uh, uh, systems. And it would be foolish to not take advantage of that. And me personally, I have a hard time not taking advantage of that. Uh, sorry, I have a hard time of taking advantage of that when I am in a... Um, uh, when I'm on paper. I naturally tend to draw flat when I'm on paper, so I prefer not to. Uh, and here what I'm doing is I am creating a downed area. I'm creating a place where everything has fallen into rubble, and I'm going to do that just by uh, rotating these things until they are clearly neither floors nor walls. Uh, and the rubble will be preventing the player from approaching at this angle. I don't have to actually prevent them at the moment because these are just layout blocks. I haven't actually uh, created the um, uh, the assets I need to actually put rubble here. And of course there are lots of other ways to do this. Uh, this is where you might use pay paper pretty, pretty uh, aggressively and be like, level designer, this is where we should put the rubble. Uh, alternately, you can wait until you have those assets and then you can be level designer, here's all the assets, and the level designer can be like, oh, I want to put rubble here, but instead of blocking it out, I'll actually put rubble here. Um, and those are all great, but since we don't have any assets and we don't have any level designers, I figured I would go ahead and just block it out, and then I'll come back in. Once I see the sorts of assets that are going to be required, I'll come back in and I will make it exactly what I want it to be. So this rubble here is going to be a one-way path. Um, and that is, the player cannot go up the rubble, but the player can come sliding down the rubble. So what that means is that we're going to want to have another layer, another level of the temple, which did not collapse, and it should be probably about up here. But it is both straight and flat at the moment, so what we're going to do is we're going to actually give it a little bit of a dangerous tilt like this. And that'll make it feel like it's more dangerous than it is, because there's a chance that you'll you know, slide off. Of course, your character has no chance of sliding off without you. Um, and then we are going to just create a, uh, a wraparound up here, where it is rotated. 
and pulls back around. And again, we're just blocking it out, so it doesn't matter if it's not perfect. Um, but overlap is better than no overlap there, something like that. And then we'll put like a treasure chest here or something. And if we really want to denote a treasure chest, we can always stick a sack. Bonk. Uh, so how do we get up to that tunnel and that sort of stuff? You can keep building more or less forever. Um, the key is that you probably shouldn't be building just uh, you know whatever happens to pop into your head. Uh, these games are best when they have a good progression to them. And um, that progression more or less requires that you understand what's happening when. And that means that for something like, um, if I hold down V, I can get a corner snap here. There we are. And that means that for something like this, uh, it would be best if I knew how the player was going to progress through it. And that means that uh, I'll need to understand which challenges happen when and what they see when. Um, it's not just a matter of challenges when you're doing level design. It's also a ma matter of where, what sort of epic things the player sees and when the player sees them. So, for my example, does the player go up this staircase or does the player actually go down into the depths first? The two staircases are almost in the exact same place. Um, they lead out into the same hallway, into the same major room. Uh, although I think that I need to move these and extend this. But when it comes to staircases, uh, players who are thinking about which direction to go, their very first instinct will always be to go to the place where they can see furthest down the line, as long as it's clearly um, got an end. Uh, that is to say, if the player can see the end of wherever they're trying to go, that's the direction they'll go. So if I grab our character here, and I stick her over here, that's fine. So if our character comes into this area here and there are sunbeams dappling down from above and she sees this giant staircase going up, she's going to automatically look and try and figure out where it's going. And she's going to see that it's going up to the second floor and that there's really nowhere else to go when, once you're up there. It clearly just goes right there and stops. And if I do go off in the other direction, it's not going to go off into some castle in the sky. It's just going to be some basic sort of dead end. And because she knows it's a dead end, she won't hesitate to go up there and check it out, looking for treasure or whatever, before she moves on down into the dungeon. And that's basically a given. Uh, it's extremely uh, rare for a player to decide to go someplace where they can't see the end before going to someplace where they can see the end. So this staircase down here will be where she would prefer to go after that. The only question is whether or not she would prefer to go up the staircase uh, and over there, or whether she would prefer to go over there, and which one of those she would prefer to do first. And the answer to that is that over where she would start, down here at the end of this area, she can't see very much up there, but she can see the little treasure chest. Whereas if she looks over here, she can see this giant thing. So to me, it doesn't matter which way she chooses to go, but there's a lure on both of them. So she'll come out here and she'll be like, well, do I want to try and go for that treasure chest? Look, I can see the path. Do you want to go over here? Look, I can see the path. And I mean, this looks um, very small, and it is pretty small, but the character is, is is much tinier than it looks when we're flying through. I mean, this is a uh, a small character in a big area. So as she's wandering around, um, trying to decide whether to go that way or that way, it's not a big deal, but it is also not a small deal. It's a significant expenditure of, of effort either way. Um, you're walking a noticeable distance. And I think she'll probably choose to go up there, but who knows. Uh, as long as she goes both ways in, in the end, it's working fine. So that's what I have in mind when I'm designing levels. And admittedly, I'm designing this one kind of freeform as I go, rather than jotting it down on paper first. But I always try to make sure that the player can see something alluring, and the player can see a path that they think will have an end, um, so they can decide which way they want to go first. 
Of course, if it's truly open world, it might be that there is no linear design to the dungeon. And this dungeon has two dead ends before you even go down into the basement, and we're probably not even going to go to the basement. There'll probably be some kind of lock down at the bottom, because adventuring on the surface is a lot easier at the moment until we build a lot more assets. So that's how I do these designs. In the next particular, uh, in the next episode, I'll probably be building the actual assets, and in the episode after that, I'll probably be putting them down on the ground. So with all of that in mind, thanks for your time.